Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And welcome back to the last weekly wrap up of 2022. This is week 52, and this means I have completed a full year of weekly wrap ups, which was one of my goals, and so I'm very excited about that. I've been having a ton of fun playing with my sister and now she is going on to see other family before she leaves and goes back to Japan. I'm happy that I am friends with my sister. I know that's not how it is in every family, but I, I realize I am truly blessed. Going into my reading wrap up, I finished three things this week. I was very surprised. None of them was what I was planning on finishing, <laughs> but that's okay. So the first thing I finished was Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell. This is not the sequel or the prequel to Ocean's Echo. This is set, this is a standalone as is the other one. And it is set in the same universe, but in a different planetary system. And actually, as I was rereading this, there's a line that talks about Orsham, which is where the other planetary system is set. So I found that kind of funny. I'm like, oh, look, there we go. There, there's our hint of another place. Ocean's Echo was so well written, and I enjoyed it so much. I wanted to go back and read the other one. And so I bought this and went back and I read it, and I enjoyed it more than I did last year. I am someone who I love rereading, so as I'm rereading this and I know like what's coming up, I can see better how Maxwell has plotted things, and I, I enjoyed it even more. I know this book has this miscommun miscommunication trope. How the trope is used, I don't mind. It's not that they are not willing to talk to one another. They are trying to talk to one another, they just don't know how to communicate. And so that's why it's a miscommunication. And for me, that happens in real life. I think I'm being very clear with what I'm saying to someone and we don't understand each other at all. Usually that's where I'm like, okay, we need to just talk about this using different words because what we're saying is not computing. And so that's what this is until the very end where a twist gets revealed and then the character's like, I don't want to talk about it which I think is a valid thing to say. Like, I don't want to talk about something that happened in my past. And so I think this gets a lot of hate for miscommunication versus in other romance books where I see miscommunication trope used. I see it where, oh, you were talking to this girl. You must be having an affair or you must like this other girl, not me. And they never talk, they never ask. In this case, like, Kim had seen Jaden with someone and he thought Jaden was vibing, he would have asked, oh, is that your lover? That's where I draw the distinction of that this miscommunication was done well. It serves a purpose for the plot because it's showing two people who are trying to learn how to communicate with one another. So you're going to have miscommunication problems. And I realized that I have not said anything about the plot. I just assumed you've all read it as well, like I have. But if you haven't, this features Kian and Jainan who are forced into a political marriage. Jainan's a uh, partner of five years, husband of five years, has was murdered a month ago. At the beginning of the book they don't know that, they just know he died. But they find out pretty quickly that he was murdered and that Jainan is a suspect. And so then they're both working to clear Jainan's name and to make sure that the treaty with the resolution goes through like it's supposed to. And that is the premise of this book. So it is sci-fi with romance. And I love it. Then I finished a collection of short stories from Margaret Pinard by <laughs> called Fabled Passages. That's the collection. And as is my habit, I'm just gonna talk about my favorite three. So the first one I want to talk about is the photograph. Now this is a actually fairly short story, but it starts off with two brothers looking for a plant that is supposed to get rid of a haunting. And then they think back on how they found out about the haunting, which is 
through a photograph. And it's not cut and dry of whether or not they want the hunting to be done. And then I also like the signs of her trade. This is actually one that I would love for Margaret to turn into a novel. I like show us the, the beginning, all the messiness of what happens, and then have this be the epilogue to the book. Because wow, there is a lot there. But I really liked the so all of these short stories have a speculative bent, but they also most of them have a historical bent as well. So this one is set in the past in England with you have witches and fae or you have witches and vampires and other paranormal creatures. And so our main character is a witch and part of her job is to as new paranormal creatures are made or found, bringing them into the society. That way they can know what the rules are. But she's not 100% happy with everybody in this paranormal world. And she sees an opening to take matters into her own hands, and she does so. And that's why I'm saying is I would love the book before that of everything that happens with all the messiness of relationships. Please. Please make this into a novel, Margaret. Please. And then my favorite of the collection is Cosmo at the Crossroads, and this is just so super sweet. We are inside the head of a pet, as the pet is talking about their world and what's normal. And then they're seeing some abnormal signs in their human, and they're not sure what to do to help. And it is just so incredibly sweet. Like I said, this one's my favorite one. And if you get the opportunity to read this collection, please do. She does have it on wide, so it's you can find it, I think, on almost any platform that you're interested in. And then, finally, I finished the novelette The Six Deaths of the Saint by Alexi Harrow. I have read things by her before. This one came to my attention because of the author Joanna Penn had sent out in the newsletter her best book stories of the year and she had this one listed and I read things by Alex Harrow and I'm like well it's usually she does fantasy most of everything else on the list was like thrillers or nonfiction thrillers mysteries or nonfiction so I picked this up it's an Amazon original and so it's not very long it's 30 pages and this is a very interesting look on a girl who is chosen to be a warrior to conquer lands for a prince and she thinks that she has seen a saint and that's how she's started and then when she gets to the end of her life she finds out that she is the saint and there's a magical pool and she then repeats her life but goes farther than her last life did and then repeats her life and goes farther and it's just a circle that's going on but even though she's repeating, it's like part of her, her remembers her past, even though she doesn't consciously remember it. Very interestingly done. It is written in second person. I enjoyed it overall. It wasn't a perfect read for me, but it is definitely one I recommend if you like fantasy. Those are the things I finished. For the things that I am currently reading, we're not surprised, are we? I don't know what's happened. I'm only a little bit further past where I was last week. I think it's because it's gotten kind of messy in the middle and now I'm like, all right, do I, am I interested in what these character motivations are? So I've been having a little bit of a hard time, but I have to finish it because it's part of the books that we're judging. And I don't want to do enough anything. I don't, I don't want to do enough the first six books that we have. So I will finish this. This is a priority read again for another week. And then we get into a pile of possibilities because there are several challenges that I'm doing this year and there's different things that I would like to read. What I have physically on hand, which gives them a greater chance, is Fence Volume 1. This is from my 2000 through 2023 challenge. 
Sisters of the Forsaken Stars, which is a novella that I have previously started, so it's on my currently reading Goodreads list, which I want to remove. And it's also a novella from that came out in 2023, so it's eligible for awards. I need to finish it and find out if I would like to nominate it or not. Once I finish Echoes of Another Earth, I am planning to pick up The Trellis, which is another of the six books for the self-published science fiction contest. I have Memoirs of a Geisha, which is on my 40 books before I turn 40. The Full Moon, which is for a, a bingo buddy read challenge. The Great Gatsby, which is on my 40 before 40. The Curious Incident of a Dog in the Nighttime, which is on my 40 before 40. The Souls of China, The Return of Religion After Mal by Ian Johnson, which is on my uh, challenge of reading a book every year for the 20, or 2000 to 2023. I have a pile of possibilities of things that I can pick up and read later this week. We will see what I kind of pick up. As I, we all know, I am a mood reader. Moving on to my writing wrap up. I did not write the last week of December. Again, spending time with family and I am totally okay with that. However, I do have a writing plan for January. I have 25 and a half scenes left to the uh, POV, Theo's POV that I started in NaNoWriMo and that is my goal to finish this month. I also want to write a short story. So I'm still gonna try to only write 10 minutes a day and then go from there. So that is my writing plan for the month of January. For other media, I am re-watching the murder mystery on BritBox, Rosemary in Time, that, or the TV show, and it's one that I've, I saw before and I just really enjoy it. I'm having fun re-watching shows that I watched when I was younger, a teenager. Some of them are still really great and others are, eh, they, they were good at their time and now not so much. And this is one that I think that has held up, has a great friend dynamic, and it's fun getting to see things from a gardener's perspective. Even if one of the gardeners was once a policewoman, still get to see things around gardening. And then my husband finally sat me down Saturday night to watch an episode of Andor. Because I keep saying, oh yeah, I'll watch it, I'll watch it. And he's like, no, I want you to watch this. So the plan is to watch one episode a night. So far, you know, after one episode, no complaints. Cinematically, it's beautiful, but just getting into the story and everything. And now for my December stats. In the month of December, I read six things. Four novels, one novelette, and one short story collection. Three of them are new releases from 2022, Ocean's Echo, Fable Passages, and The Six Deaths of the Saint. For my currently reading, I started the month at 108, and I didn't add anything to my currently reading list or read anything off of it, so I'm still at 108. For my physical TBR, I purchased two books, but then I read two books from my physical TBR, so I start the month at 134, and I end the month at 134. And then for my series, that I'm reading. The only book I read this month that was part of a series is a continuation of a series, so I did not start anything and I did not finish anything. So I'm still at 96 series that I'm working on and 23 of which are caught up. Yay! <laughs> And in my next video, you're going to get a full breakdown of the year, kind of looking at all my stats and reflecting on how my goals have gone. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I find it easier to rewatch or reread things versus try something new. Just sometimes my brain wants to re something because then I don't have to think about it as much. So it's not like I don't want to try new things, but sometimes my brain's just like, eh, 
don't think as much. I know that probably sounds crazy. For now, I hope you all have had a wonderful 2022, and I look forward to going with you into 2023. Thank you, and have a great day.